All right. Okay. First up. Uh, we've got some more keyboard cases. Um, we have the 60% uh, keyboard shells, um, but let's say you like arrow keys, you want a bigger shell. Um, you know, like these are these are called the K68s or JKDK68s. Um, I don't have CAD files for them. I'm gonna try to get them, um, but you could just measure um, the mounting holes and, and use these for designing a PC before keyboard. Um, I always like to have the enclosure first before I design stuff, so that's why we're carrying a lot of keyboard shells before we make any keyboard uh, PCBs. I just think it's better to, to get all the, the cases uh, nailed down because that's something that's very hard to do after the fact. It's a lot easier to adapt a PCB for a case than the other way around. Okay, next up. This is fun. This is like the best alarm clock for an engineer. Yeah, you sent this to me. I think this was this was on the social media. I just thought this was hilarious. So it's a... It, and it's actually... It's one of those things that's like, haha, so funny, but then you use it and you're like, actually, this is kind of good. It's a um, multimeter that's also a Bluetooth speaker and also an alarm clock and also has built-in batteries that can be recharged, so it's portable. Um, and it's a good benchtop multimeter. Like, it's actually kind of nice. I think, you know, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't replace my, um, you know, handheld multimeter, but I think if you're going to do, if you're going to have something that's a benchtop speaker slash alarm, you might as well toss a multimeter in and uh, it works great, comes with probes and it's not too expensive. It kind of does everything you want. Um, and I like the nice big display. So yeah, it does it all. It's a, you know, dessert topping and a floor wax and a multimeter and an alarm and a Bluetooth speaker and does, you know, continuity and current and frequency and, and all that good stuff. So great for dorm rooms. I, yeah, I think actually this would be really useful for, to be honest, what it would be really useful for is a, um, is a makerspace or workshop yeah. because it's portable. I do like that you don't have to have it plugged in. You can charge over USB, but then you can pick it up and move it anywhere. And that, I think, does make it useful. So straight up, if you're going to get an alarm clock for the, you know, nightstand, get this because you know your, your multimeter is going to break one day. You're going to be like, oh, no, it's late at night. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah. Just grab your alarm clock. All right, next up. All right, next up, we've got uh, two sets of uh, YC8s. Uh, these are aeronautical style quick connects, um, you know, sometimes called limo connectors, uh, which we covered. Those are usually quite expensive in their military specification and they're, they're actually used in aeronautics. This is aeronautic style. I would not use this in an actual aeronautics project. They're not specified for that. Don't use this in your F-14. However, if you are making projects that want that kind of connector, a quick release connector that's very uh, reliable and durable, these are really good quality connectors. Um, usually this stuff is out of the uh, financial range for most projects, which is why you don't see them, because usually the, the connectors are $50 a piece. These are like under, seven, you know, they're seven or $8 a piece. So they're, um, a much more affordable version. Um, I've seen these used a lot in um, keyboard DIY uh, uh, quick connect USB cables, which you can use them for. And you know, maybe we'll do a project on that. But they're they're good for other uses as well. I you know, when we were doing wearables, um, we use these uh, for quick connects to connect different elements of the wearable system because you want to be able to quickly remove them, but you want them to stay durable. These are extremely durable if you use the right diameter cable, which is the thing about them. Um, you really need to use the exact right diameter cable because the inside of um, the connectors has like a little metal spring piece. Uh, it's here, if you go here, it, you see it in the middle there, it, there's sort of like a crown shaped piece. Um, so that grips onto um, the outer cover of your cable and it really needs to be like within a millimeter. Um, so, you know, there's some people who are like, well, you can use thinner cable and then put heat shrink on it. I just, whatever you do, you really do, you know, this is the thing that's hardest to use about it. The soldering isn't too tough. The assembly isn't too tough, but having the right diameter cable is, is what makes it challenging. So, um, I'd say just for that, that's the one thing to watch out for. Otherwise the strain relief won't work. You could use a thinner cable and then maybe stuff some hot glue in there. Um, that's an alternative. I think it'll work just fine. Um, but if you want to use it the way it was meant to, there is that there is this press fit part that needs to be kind of perfectly sized. Next up. Um, next up, we have a um, all-in-one sort of like tablety HMI kit from Espressif. Um, I do like the ESP32S2, and I do like that they packed this full of hardware. 
I will say it doesn't have CircuitPython support. I don't even think it has Arduino support. You're supposed to use this with the um, Espresso IDF. And even then, it's probably not going to have full support for a little bit. They do take uh, some time to, to get support out. When you plug it in, it doesn't do anything, so it doesn't come with a demo even. But uh, it does have a beautiful 4-inch uh, capacitive touch screen with a 16-bit um, parallel port connection. There's all these uh, at the bottom, looks like JST-SH connectors for like STEMIQT, but also SPI and UART. It's got the ESP32 S2 Rover. So it's got Wi-Fi and um, native USB. It's got another USB port for the debug console um, and programming. So it's kind of good for that. Uh, it got capacitive touch. Um, a couple of sensors. I think there's an infrared thing. There's battery management. Um, there's this particular one, they don't ship it with a battery, but you can grab a iPhone 5 battery off the shelf and apparently just plugs in. They, to, to make shipping easy, it doesn't ship with a battery. Micro SD card slot. So it's one of those things where I got this, not because we support it, but because I think this is a good um, hardware setup that I would like to support one day in CircuitPython because it kind of covers everything. So maybe I'll go to the overhead real fast and I'll just sort of yeah. point out because there is, uh, there's some depth here. So um, it comes with this like 3D printed or I don't know, injection molded, I don't know exactly case. Um, but this is kind of a, a, a divot here. So this is where that um, iPhone 5 battery would go. Um, all the different pieces, this case has slots here for all the connectors. Uh, two USB-Cs, there's a speaker um, that's built into um, this kind of uh, piece here. Uh, this is nice gold um, copper, you know, it's it, the, what all the pin connections are, are etched into copper. Uh, you can go here to download um, the software, but it's kind of got a little bit of everything, which I thought was um, kind of neat. And, uh, you know, particularly having something that has the uh, capacitive touch button, uh, the capacitive touch screen, clearly it's like from a, a phone or something that is uh, being recycled. Um, and a nice beveled case with um, light sensor and humidity sensor and SD card and everything. So a good, a good collection of everything you want. And it's, you know, features our favorite uh, new chip, the ESP32 S2. All right. And start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our team, is... Uh, the IS31FL3741 RGB matrix driver. Uh, we've been working on this breakup for a bit, and, and I was a little scared of putting this together because there's so many RGB LEDs. 117 of them, in fact. It's a 9 by 13 um, grid of RGB LEDs matrixed through I squared C using this cool chip, the IS31FL3741, as mentioned. Um, it can drive like 351 LEDs or 117 RGB LEDs. Um, it's designed so you can tile them side by side and of course each LED. It's not NeoPixels or dot stars or just analog LEDs that are PWM'd at 8 bit per channel. So you get 24 bit color, uh, basically. Um, and uh, i squared makes it really easy to use. You can use it with Python or CircuitPython or Arduino. If you want, you know, a lot of LEDs, we recommend going up to our RGB hub 75 matrices. You know, those of course you'll get 32 by 64, 16 by 32, like tons and tons of LEDs, but you do need a lot of pins. Whereas what's nice about this is it's all over I squared C. So it's really easy and it's low power and it looks really good. And honestly, I chose on the overhead, but this is kind of, on the other one. kind of looks better, although you can see it, it, but nice and bright. This looks good too. I'll say this. I wish that anyone who does electronics would show videos of things working or do, or even just do like a quick phone video. Um, because you never get to see this stuff actually working. Yeah, this actually, I'm surprised that the color came it through. It looks great, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's very easy to use, um, and we designed it so you could tile them side by side. An earlier version of the prototype didn't have this bottom edge, but we thought people would rather have mounting holes, because again, if you want a lot of LEDs, you should just get our Hub 75 matrices. Honestly, they're, they're gonna do a, a way better job um, than this. So, um, this is cute. We're gonna make more of these. Uh, we have to, we're going to go through a lot of LEDs. I have to order like a couple hundred thousands of LEDs because it adds up fast. We don't have anything else that has this many RGB LEDs in them. Uh, so, you know, what I normally would think of as a lot, like a reel of 6,000. Nope, that was gone in about like two minutes. Uh, thankfully, our pick and place has a lot of heads. Yeah, 10 years ago, I said it'll take a little while, but we'll get there. We'll eventually be able to make a jacket that plays Blade Runner, the movie. Yeah. 
So we're getting there. We're getting it there. Is, it is on that long list of things. Like, we can, we can like, have Pixel. Like later. scripting languages for microcontrollers, also wearable TVs. Okay. <laughs> but it'll, yeah. Anyways, more on that later. And that's new products. Yay, little colorful. No, 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 no.